All right, everyone, let's go ahead and talk about um, the standard bar, some of the tools and some of the options. Now, I'm not going to take you into all of the uh, options of, of stitch types and all that on the standard bar, but we're going to go ahead and, and, and start up here uh, with the new option. I'm just going to go ahead and close this screen out. Um, the new icon, you click this icon and a new design window will open. We've already explained this in an earlier video, but I want to show you some of the functions of them right now. So we click on the, the new icon, up comes a new window. The icon to the right of that is your open. You click this icon and the open design window will appear. This will allow you to quickly navigate through any folder containing the file that you want. So you know what, we'll go ahead and just bring up the snowboarder again. You simply click on it, click open, up it comes on the screen. Uh, now, the save icon. You click this to save your design with the click of a button. If you've not saved the design prior to clicking this icon, it will open up uh, the Save As dialog box so you can lo uh, select the folder to save the design and also you can name the file. Point is, you'll click File and Save As to initially save, but as you digitize, and you've made changes to it. When you want those changes to hold, uh, uh, you simply click on save. It will then save all of the changes. Simply by clicking on it, it will save all current data with any given design or design element. Um, the next icon is your print preview. You click this icon to access the print preview screen. We're going to get deeper into this and I'll explain all this, but uh, actually it takes you right to your print preview screen so you can save all of your data. Let's go ahead and close that. The next icon that you have right here is your uh, uh, cut icon. Actually, this excuse me. This is your machine icon. When you want to send directly uh, to your machine, just select on that. You'll see your machine on there. You can send the data if you are direct connected right into the system. The next uh, icon is your cut. You click this icon when you want to cut an object out of a design. You must first select the object, then click on this icon to cut it out of the design example. Let's go ahead and click our select. Let's go ahead and just click on that right area or that red area right there. Come up to cut, simply click on it, and boom, it disappears from the design. Uh, the next icon, we'll go ahead and undo that. The next icon is your copy. Use this icon to copy an object in your design. Again, you must first select the object, then click on the icon. So let's go ahead and select it. Let's click on that. And let's go ahead and click on copy. Next icon is the paste. Use this icon to paste a copy object into your design. Again, you must first copy the object and click this icon to paste it into the design. So I've already copied that. I'm now going to paste it. I'll then grab it, move it you'll see that I have copied it and pasted it anywhere that I want within the design. Uh, the next icon is your undo. Use it to undo changes or additions you just made to the design. So let's go ahead and undo that. Let's go ahead and undo our copy. And you'll see now the undo has uh, disappeared. There's no functionality to it once you go back to the beginning of your undo. Next is your redo. You redo, uh, you use this to redo or put back the steps you just undid or deleted. So we'll go ahead, redo it. Redo it again, and you'll see it puts back in that copy that we just did. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. A couple of undos, and we're out of there. Next is the zoom box. Good looks. Let me go ahead and take you through a little bit about the zoom box. Uh, the, you use this to zoom in and out of your design. Number one, when you click the down arrow and you have zoom in, and you'll for zoom in is number one. Each time you select this option, it will double the zoom amount. So we click zoom in and it's doubled the zoom, click it one more time, you'll see it's again doubled it. Uh, the reverse is, is the same for zoom out. Each time you select, it will reduce the zoom by half. So let's go ahead and zoom out a couple of times. One more time. Okay. Uh, to fit, which is the next selection, when you select this option, it will zoom as much as possible to fit the entire design into the design window. So, boom, it will fill it up fill the entire window that it possibly can. Uh, the next one is to selection. First of all, let's go ahead and select an area. We'll just select that red area. Doesn't matter. Let's get out of there. Click on that. We've selected that red area. When you select in the zoom feature to selection, uh, it will zoom into the selected item enough to make it fill the entire window. So to selection. Boom. And you see that it's zoomed in as much as it possibly can to fit the window into that selected area. Uh, the next choice is one to one. Uh, when you select this option, it will zoom the design to where it's the actual size or the sew-out size. We'll select one-to-one. -one. There's the actual size of the design. 
on the screen. Uh, the next choice is down below that's 10 to 400 percent. When you select one of the percentage, it will zoom in the amount selected. So if we go ahead and put in 400 percent, we get an exacting 400 percent zoom. Now, let me explain something else about the zoom. Uh, it was something that we just added, but isn't in the workbook currently. When on the screen, and you just simply left click anywhere on the screen, and you now use your scroll key, you can scroll to zoom. So makes it kind of handy. I use that an awful lot. Uh, the next icon is your start stop icon. This displays the start and stop position of the design. Let me show you a couple of choices that you have. Let's go ahead and zoom to fit the window. We're on the window now and we're going to go ahead and click on start and stop. Uh, number one is the center choice. This will place the start and stop position in the center of the design. Uh, to have the design start and end in the center of the design, just click this option. So it's already chosen. We'll come back to that. Uh, first stitch. This displays the starting location of the design. To view the starting location of the design, just click this option. So we'll go ahead and click there. Now my start and my end point are both located at the first needle penetration within the design. The next selection is last stitch. Uh, this will display the end location in the design to view the last stitch. So last stitch, your start and end point are now in the last point of the design or last needle penetration. Uh, the next choice is first stitch, last stitch. Doing that, the design will now start here, signified by the green, by the red, it will now end there. Uh, you can then choose one location. So if I want to select, this will make the start and stop location to be the same. Uh, to select the location, you just simply click this option, left mouse click in the design where you want to start and stop the design. So I will come in here, one location, I can set it over here, the design will now start and stop in that location. The next choice, excuse me, is your two locations. By choosing two location, this allows you to select the start and stop locations in the design. Uh, you simply uh, select the two locations, I can now left click where I want the design to start, I can right click where I want the design to end. This basically utilizes, and where you utilize this one location, two locations, uh, and such, uh, for continuous Continuous embroidery, if I want to uh, create a continuous embroidery, many times I'll use two locations. Uh, start point being, let's say, on the far left, end point being on the far right of the design. Uh, for continuous lace, continuing bordering designs in that, you'll utilize that. And then again, just to show you now, uh, most designs in the preset is always center. Uh, for adding lettering, uh, for merging to in that, normally center location, and this will clicking on center will start and end the design in the center location. Uh, the next one is the auto lock. Uh, with this option is selected, you'll automatically place a lock stitch when starting a design object, following a trim, and place a lock stitch before a trim automatically. Uh, control when this takes place, the distance between objects, uh, you simply view uh, the general options section. So you go into general options and you can select uh, the distance between objects to uh, to select your auto lock, simply click on it and we'll put a lock stitch before and after uh, trims and such. All right, next to that are the how-to videos. It's not fully loaded, but clicking on this icon, I'll go ahead and click on it. Uh, this is where uh, all of the videos on the how-to step-by-step training videos on the software. So there will be under video manual, there will be complete videos on all of the aspects of the software. Also, you're then going to find Walt's Corner. This is where I put all my separate separate videos that not only deal with the software, but many times just about embroidery in general. Uh, I'm very excited. That's a great area. Lots of learning. Also, uh, when uh, um, I have questions come over the forum and I will answer them with videos, you'll find them in most cases down in Walt's Corner. If you're online and you click on Walt's Corner, now the software will come with a certain amount of videos loaded in it, uh, but new videos that I produce uh, you will find in the Walt's Corner area. So when I ask specific questions, and these are some of the new videos that I've just completed, uh, I do work with the support uh, online support forum, but I find when some technical questions are asked, uh, many times I will go ahead and answer questions with uh, videos as opposed to just sending you a simple text answer. So, and the final one we're going to cover right now, because after that we're going to get into the stitches, uh, is about. Uh, and really, clicking on this icon, you'll open a Wilcom, show you the version of the software, other information about the software. Uh, so there you go. There's a little bit about the standard bar tools and some of the options and how they work, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue right on. Hugs and stitches to you all.